I'm Eric McNair Landry, I'm 23 years old, and I'm from Iqaluit, Nunavut. Not much prepares one uh, for working with Will Steger, but uh, I've done a whole bunch of different adventures. I've done a, three Greenland trips now, uh, and a trip to Antarctica, also just growing up and living in Nunavut in the cold weather and running dogs, uh, kind of with a family, as a family event. It should prepare me pretty well for this type of adventure. Uh, both Sarah and I, my sister, uh, have the responsibility of finding and basically training 33 dogs up to what we consider expedition quality. So they're definitely, they have to be really fit, they've got to be strong enough to pull the sleds. Uh, we'll probably take on training another third member to, to run the dogs. Just, you know, we've got two members who, other than my sister and myself, who are very good at dog, sled, dog sledding. but. They still need to get to know our system of dog sledding and also our dogs, which is highly important. Mm. Well, obviously, as far as skills that I'm bringing to this expedition, there's the, the dog sledding skills, uh, you know, survival skills. I'll survive myself, you know, which will be somewhat important. Um, I'll bring some skills with electronics. That's always been kind of my strength. And renewable energies, you know, a big part of this expedition is we want to go with all renewable energies, no generators, nothing like that to power our equipment. Uh, yeah, obviously, dog sledding skills is kind of one of the bigger ones. Great. That's a really hard one. You know, I'd like to continue inspiring other people to, to do what they enjoy doing. Um, I think the biggest part of that is to, to make sure that other people realize that what we're doing might not necessarily be what they want to, to enjoy. You know, there's tons of great sports out there. Um, and a lot of that for me is pushing myself to do absolutely ridiculous things I'm not good at, like skateboarding or you know, try out surfing or some other things but you know, that other people may still be interested in basically to prove that I still suck at some sports <laughs> and that, yeah, there's definitely other great things to do. Um, I don't really know where I stand with the whole environmental thing and how much teaching I'll do after that. Uh, for me, I come from a very scientific background and uh, I need to scientifically understand the whole global warming issue much, much more strongly. Um, and there's even the science today is not completely evolved to the standing it needs to be. We definitely need a lot more research done into it. Global warming, in my opinion, and this may not reflect the expeditions, obviously, uh, needs to be done through uh, multiple ways. Um, we need to look into putting a carbon tax, roughly 2 to $14, uh, on all emissions, greenhouse gas emissions. And that needs to be approved globally. Um, from there, also, I think that more money needs to be spent into looking into global warming itself. We still don't understand the number in which it creates a critical mass. Uh, right now, we're about 480 to 500 parts per million is where we think it'll hit critical mass. But we still don't understand a lot of the, the seeding effects and a lot of the effects of, of you know, the different chemicals, basically, on the atmosphere. Uh, so our predictions you know, can only go up to 100 years, and even then, they're incredibly vague, which makes making policies virtually impossible uh, you know, based on that information. I think we need to realize that we live in a, a social, economical world, especially here in the United States, even more so. Uh, and instead of trying to fight with oil companies by creating these you know, huge uh, incentives for greenhouses, for uh, green energies, I think what we really need to focus on is trying to bring down the cost of wind, trying to bring down the cost of solar. And so instead of subsidizing the use of the technology, let's subsidize the invention of newer and better technologies. Uh, and that way we won't have to continue subsidizing them into the future, they'll fight for themselves. Well, I think we definitely need to understand global warming uh, and that in part will affect how we you know, so-called fight it um, or adapt to it. You know, a little bit of both. Already now we understand with global warming that the damage, a vast majority of the damage has been done and will continue playing through. So adaptability is something, you know, the world is beautiful as it is now. It's unfortunate that we'll have to see it change, but change doesn't always bring around horrible things. Um, why the youth should be aware of this, uh, aware of global warming and how to fight it is, it's obviously affecting us or will affect us in the future. I mean, the play out of global warming will be massive. Um, we're talking about, you know, 300 years at kind of a minimum. Uh, so, you know, even in that scope, we'll only see the very beginning to it. Uh, it's possibly our children that will see even more. So in many ways, it's a, a personal investment. It's the same reason why we invest in companies, because we expect a return. <laughs> You know, in very many ways with global warming, we're investing in our own for future. That's why it's somewhat important for our generation to look into.